We don't hide anything. I'm not under the table and all of that weird stuff. You don't have to do that. So my buyer's right here. He understands that I made money. He's making money. Everybody's making money. He makes his monthly payments. I pay the bank. I make my money. Everybody wins. My house is over here. My buyer is actually at this event. The guy that's buying it from me. Gave me a down payment, making monthly payments. He's here. They're still working on it. Jason, guys, this is my buyer, Jason. This is his house. How I say take control, own nothing, but control everything. He controls this house. He paid his down payment and he's making a super cheap monthly payment, but he's fixing it up right now. He's got a lot going on in there. He's painting it and stuff. We could probably walk in the driveway if you guys want to take a closer look. We don't hide anything. I'm not under the table and all of that weird stuff. You don't have to do that. So my buyer's right here. He understands that I made money. He's making money. Everybody's making money. He gave me a $30,000 down payment. That was the 15.7. I paid the 15.7 back payment on it. I charged him 89.9 for this place. It's worth 127. So he wants to use the Burr strategy. The Burr strategy, you've got to get a house at 70% market value. So I became the bank and I gave him a house in God's country at 70% market value. So he could do the Burr strategy. Everybody made money on it, man. He makes his monthly payments. I pay the bank, I make my money, everybody wins. And then we establish a relationship. You know what I mean? It's relationship equity. It's not transactional, man. So you gotta treat people right. What contract did you use for this one? Contract for deed. I did this one a little more sophisticated though, because I sold it to him on contract. So he is the registered owner online. When you look online, it's not gonna say that I'm the contract buyer, but you'll see next to that, the mailing address, 1E3T Holdings. Right, so it was a little more sophisticated, so I don't want to get too high level, but he controls this house. And as long as he performs on the contract, I got to ask him permission. Any more questions? You get it. This was the one that was going to sheriff's auction in six days. And she called me out of the blue when I had made contact with her based off of my research methods, finding the prospects. I found it seven months prior to that before anybody had reached out. I went, knocked on her door, introduced myself, talked to her. She wanted to go through the process. I was like, all right, well, hey, if I can answer any questions for you, I'd be happy to. Or if I can point you in the direction of somebody that can help you, I will. So I left, went and did my thing. She called me back in July. I was gonna put her in that house that I just showed you guys, cause I had just got that house. So I was gonna transfer her, man. She needed a place to live. She was acting all picky though. Like homeowners are delusional. She was acting like she pays her bills. Like, you know, there's no fence and are you serious? So I was like, you know what? I can't help you. I'm the wrong person to help you. I'm sorry. If I can answer any questions, I will. So I'm chilling. Fast forward to September because she had her 90 day delay of sale. And I knew that. So I said, I'm the only person in this city that knows how to do this. She's got two options. She can either lose her house or she can call me and I can help her. That's it. So she waited though, two months, man. So she only had six days left. So now I'm in a position where I was gonna give her way more money in July for this house. But we only had six days left. So she had two options, man. And she was, I mean, it was right there. So she was like, I'm getting kicked out of my house. Sheriffs are gonna come put myself on the curb or I can let Jean help me. So I didn't really even have to give her any money, but I gave her 4,000 up front. And then I was only gonna give her 5,000, but I called her back the next day because it's not cool to do people wrong, man. I wasn't doing her wrong but I just knew I could have did better. You know, it's just cutting out of my profit a little bit, but that's okay. So I called her back the next day and I told her my committee authorized another thousand dollars. I owe her 2000 now. See, this is the beauty of it, man. You can do terms on everything. I got terms with my seller. I bought the house on terms and then I'm giving her 4,000. And then when he pays, exercises his option and gives that balloon payment, I'm gonna give her another 2,000. I'm gonna get paid three times on this house. The down payment, the monthly payment, and then option is exercise. I'll get another chunk, guys, and everybody wins. No credit checks, I didn't spend any money, and I became the bank, man. That's how you do it. Okay, so how do you feel about the motivation? So far, I feel like it's, it's really like lit a fire. It's kind of getting me out of a rut that I was in, and just personal growth and encouragement and, like I said, lighting a fire and getting me encouraged to move toward uncertainty, like Dr. Sanchez said, and feeling uncomfortable. I feel like I kind of just put things on the back burner and I know that I want to do something more. I know that I'm interested in being an entrepreneur and doing these things and I, and I have that. I just needed to light a fire. I just needed something to motivate me and push me to, to get going. And I feel like this was the first step in doing that.
So how does it make you feel then with that fire being lit that you can do this without a credit check or a lump sum of money? How do you feel about that? I feel like I want to know more about that and I want to I want to master that. I want to dig deep into that and, and master it and be able to execute it.